today from the USA. Uh, Mr. Fischer is an international human, human rights advocate and is representing the Kosovo Roma Rights Coalition regarding resolution of outstanding Kosovo war issues. Mr. Barry Fischer. So first, uh, May 16 is a day about protest and I want to begin with my own little protest, which is first that this Romani week at the European Parliament is for Parliament members to learn, for the speakers to be speaking to the Parliament. And it is uh, necessary that it be in, it, you can't hear me? Yes. Yeah, it, it's necessary that it be in a big room where it will accommodate members of parliament who want to hear, and, and especially the program that we are doing is to educate and to bring allies and for members of parliament to learn. But instead, the European parliament has put the Roma in a small room where they speak to each other about things that they already know. And it, 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 it advances nothing for Roma. So uh, that's my first protest. Another is about language. It's very nice for me to hear so many Roma speaking English, but this is a place where they should be speaking the Roma language. I, you know, the person from, a few people from Spain. No, I want, I want to hear Kalo. How many people have ever heard Kalo speak, spoken? And other, uh, dialects of, of Romani. This is critical to, and in such a place for the European Parliament to hear the language and even for Roma to hear the other languages that they, they don't hear. So they should be speaking in that. And my last point is something that has bothered me. I have worked with Roma organizations in the United States and in, in Europe uh, for 30, 40 years. And it always bothers me to hear this reference, Sinti and Roma, and always put Sinti first and then Roma, as if, as if Sinti are from a different planet than the Roma. And this is wrong. And, and uh, you know, Romeo Franz spoke a little today that he is Roma, that he is Roma. So, so you know, this is, this is one vitsa, there are many vitsas, and they should all be spoken of, and, and the vocabulary of members of the European Parliament should know of the vitsas that are in their countries, Lovaro, whatever, you know. Th th this is uh, important to, to raise the consciousness of who the Romani people are. So language, vitsas, you know, and the variety uh, that exists out there. So, let me begin, because this is not what I planned to begin with, and of course now we have very little time because the, 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 uh, the, somebody thought that the program was over before we, we began. So, first of all, I want to say that previously I've spoken here at the European Parliament a few times, uh, in the past advocating for Kurdish people against the government of Turkey's attempt to gain EU membership until providing justice for Kurds. And I'm here today because I've been serving as a legal counsel for what is really a, a historic coalition of Romani NGOs from many European uh, countries where Roma fled uh, death, destruction, exile, and, and all have for 20 years been awaiting justice uh, uh, so far denied by the Republic of Kosovo government, which I had hoped would be present, you know, some uh, agents in the audience of a larger room uh, that would want to know what we have in mind, but the room is, is basically closed for such uh, participation. But, it, the, you know, co uh, for Turkey, we protested uh, the Kurds protested Turkish accession to EU membership until there's justice for Kurds. And this is really the problem for Kosovo, that you know, the, the, the Kosovo government, like Turkey, seeks UN membership and deep, diplomatic uh, acceptance in the world of nations. And our coalition, um, uh, which includes a, a renowned international human rights lawyer, uh, Diane Post, who was a lawyer for the victims of the lead poisoning in camps that 
that uh, Roma uh, were forced to live in um, uh, during this time. Uh, and, and she was successful before a UN a agency decision, a court decision. But that was years ago, and no action has been taken on behalf of the victims who continue uh, to suffer. Now, two months ago, two months ago, uh, on behalf of this coalition that we form, the Kosovo Roma Rights uh, Coalition, uh, I sent a letter to the Republic of uh, Kosovo's President Osmani, Prime Minister Kurti, and the Justice Minister uh, Hajiu, uh, a document which detailed many of the things that my, my friend uh, Burhan uh, spoke, just spoke about, on unresolved issues, that not only for the Roma, but for the associated peoples, Ashkali, so-called Balkan uh, Egyptians, uh, and we, um, it, and this really now totals maybe 200,000 people because it includes not only the people that were forced out or left uh, uh, to save their lives, but their fa children, they now, it's 22 years later, they have children, they have spouses, and, and so it's a, lar it's a large group. And th this large group by these, this coalition has unified to demand that the government of, of Kosovo meet with me members of the uh, coalition to work to find a comprehensive solution for the Kosovo war displaced citizens, of which uh, they all are. And, uh, and, and this coalition is large, but it needs additional members. You know, the, the Roma from Finland and other organizations should join the, this coalition uh, because its work is only now beginning. Because what happened is we sent this, this letter, but the, the Republic of Kosovo's response was an absolute categorical refusal to even meet, to even have a, a discussion. Uh, notwithstanding that what's involved are ever increasing, festering problems, and make no mistake, the problems of the diaspora Rome uh, are the problems of the government of uh, the Republic of Kosovo, because the Constitution, by the, its own Constitution, these people, whether living in Kosovo or in diaspora, are citizens and have no less the rights of those living in Kosovo, many of whom were, uh, had a part in expropriating property or causing harm to the people in exile. They have equal, the people in exile have equal rights. Uh, and the refusal to even meet uh, is completely unacceptable response of a country that wants universal <coughs> recognition and to be an EU member. Um, but it, it's actually worse in this recent time. I mean, the, I, this letter we sent two months ago and then we received a response that they wouldn't uh, even meet. But the Kosovo government very recently uh, t took another step to distance itself from a path of working with the diaspora uh, Kosovo Roma. They just issued a four-year a four plan for the future of better relations with, with Roma. So they issued a plan for 2022 to 2026, for, and the report is 115 pages, and they, this came out. And this report includes not a single word about the problems of diaspora Kosovo Roma, not one word. So this is uh, to kick in the teeth the, the Roma who were forced to leave are living elsewhere, that in a way, if, if things were different, could be a great asset, could be a benefit to these people in Kosovo that want EU membership and, and all these things. They could be allies instead of being on the outside and, and, and sitting here, and sitting here as we are in an audience of Rome that know exactly what we're talking about. This is nothing new. You're not learning anything. And we're not speaking to members of parliament who we would 
hope would become allies uh, in the future. Uh, and it's at the end of the day, so they, there's, there's many empty seats. Uh, so, and, and there were even some allies that came from England that went out to bring a letter to the Kosovo <coughs> embassy, so they're not here. But uh, the Kosovo government well knows uh, that the Kosovo War was not the only time in history, uh, not even the first time uh, in the Kosovo uh, history, uh, where Roma were caught in the crossfire of war. Uh, people trying to survive within the borders were, you know, were ne neither side uh, accepted uh, Roma. Even as far back as the Battle of Kosovo, uh, centuries ago, 1389, Rome were living in Kosovo and were caught in the middle of the, uh, you know, Ottoman uh, uh, is Islamic group and the Serbian Orthodox group. And the Kosovo War of 1998 to 99 an extension of the Bosnian War, to, in many ways, was an extension, a continuation of the Battle of Kosovo, uh, uh, of nationalism rooted in the religion identification with Roma discriminated no matter what the religion, no matter what side, you know, the, the, it, it excluded. And of course, today's Ukraine war is no different, with large population uh, Rom Romani caught in a crossfire, discriminated in, uh, in Ukraine, uh, as many try to flee, discriminated in Russia if they're uh, trying to go there, discriminated at borders of any country they try to go to, whether Romania, Moldova, Slovakia, Hungary, not treated as other Ukrainian refugees. So, so the, the problem from 22 years ago for Kosovo is the same as is being played out right now for Ukraine and, uh, and, and has been played out so many times in, in Romani history. Um, so this, uh, this coalition, um, again, needs strength and more allies. And it, it is only beginning because the coalition of the diaspora Roma can speak more freely than the, than, the, than the Roma in Kosovo itself. In Kosovo, there's conflicts of interest, there, you know, there's political pressure, there's retribution that can happen, injustice that continues with police and, and government agencies. So this is not about the people there, it's about the, the Kosovo people that have been living in diaspora throughout uh, Europe and Canada and some in the United States all these years. And it's time for them to stand up and it's time for allies to join in and to make a statement and to seek justice for Kosovo Roma, wherever, in Serbia, in any place they are. Thank you.